decent Christian white men. Let's see her do that to a, a man of color. Let's see her do that to a gay. Let's see her do that to a Muslim. Let's see her do that to any Democrat, and you'll find out that it's all a charade. My opinion, back in a minute. Hey, Megan. How are you, lass? Let's see how tough you are with the Democrats. Your tartan is showing. Lady, your tartan is showing. And those colors are on. So uh, we're talking about everything under the sun, including the uh, the so debate. What debate? It wasn't a debate. It was a wrestling match put on by, by uh, Roger Ailes. He likes to have strong people stronger than himself rip each other to pieces. That's how he gets his rocks off. He manipulates them to attack each other, and he uses the river dancer to do what he can't do in person. He's not alone in that. In that, he is not alone. I feel good today. It's Friday, and I'm so tired from this week. I am so tired between the debates and the dog and the sickness and the anxiety and the electrocardiogram for the dog and then the teeth out and then seeing him sick, and I thought he would die, and he didn't, and holding him and him crying. and this. He's getting better now. He's starting to eat a little bit without teeth. Toothless dog. No, he still has his canines and a number of teeth. He's still on meds. He's the mascot of the Savage Nation. I'm allowed to tell you that. Many of you know that. And I feel good because I just ate a taco during the break from a chain taqueria. A, uh, a beef taco. Oh, my God. It was so good with such hot sauce. My tongue is on fire. Because if there's a lot of germs around, I want to have a lot of hot sauce in my mouth. Why do you think hot sauce is so popular in Mexico and Point South? How did it develop that the, the chili pepper was used to such an extent? They had very bad sanitation they had very bad no refrigeration and that's where the hot spices came in whether it goes back to ancient egyptian times or any culture so in these times you should start eating spices i know that's hard to understand if you're a republican if you like white bread and mayonnaise sandwiches and your idea of a beverage at night is a hot glass of milk you're not going to like the diet you're going to have to be on in the coming in the new america but you can't do anything about it you caused it WSBA, Kim, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your point? What's on your mind? How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm not allowed to say hi and how are you, so I'm going to say hi anyway. Two Trump points. First of all, it was refreshing to hear people be able to debate without the bully in the middle of the stage. That's my opinion. Second point, and you know the real reason that Trump didn't show up, and it's not the Megyn Kelly story that they put out there, but as you notice, there were two videos played by Fox on uh, Cruz Point over his history and um, uh, Rubio Point. Well, Trump's campaign got wind of the fact that they also had uh, film or coverage or whatever on him, on points he's made over the years and how he's waffled. And that was the real reason Trump didn't show up to the debate. And right. So well, you're making a very good point. You're making a fine point. I'm not here to defend Trump. I still will vote for him because I think he's the best chance we have to save the country. So what are you saying? He's a politician like the rest of them? Yeah, that's been, it was just really refreshing to not have him in the middle of the stage. I mean, Trump, you know. So in other words, you're, you're a purist. You'd rather lose the election to Hillary or Bernie. That makes sense. Up against either of those two, you bet I'll take Trump in a million years. However, oh, wait, wait, sorry, what what did you just say? If it was a choice between Hillary, Bernie, and Trump, you you would take who? Oh, Trump in a Trump in a heartbeat. All right, I hear what you're saying. You're going to go by default, in other words. You're a default voter. In a heartbeat, it's just he's a billionaire bully, and you know he, he's the kind of kid in school that if he doesn't get his own way, he's a bully, and so. So I take it that you were not popular in school. Good-looking guys didn't date you. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't hear it. Hey, I've listened to you. See, he was the he was the frat boy from private school who wouldn't even look at you. Hey, I listened to you for five years, and I'm a sexy redhead. I love you. Oh, that hurt. I like that, Kim. But you you understand? You can take it. Come on, you're tough. Hey, you, you know, know you're really you're touch you're touching on something that's emotionally interesting to me. Because I've been saying that women do like Trump and they don't like Cruz and things like that. But here you are, a woman who doesn't like either of them. Isn't that true? 
No, I like all of them. Any of them except for the guy on the far left. What was his name? Rand Paul. Up What's with eight. him? What happened to that guy? Them. Oh. Well, what happened to that guy? Why is he becoming such a loser? Well, I don't like his curly perm on top and his straight hair on the side. <laughs> I really don't. Oh, God. I don't even notice that. It's curly on top and, and straight on the side. What does that indicate? That he had a permanent? Ben Carson, and he got no time to talk, as usual. Well, that, okay, that's why he's unqualified at any speed. If he can't make himself heard in a crowded auditorium, how's he going to make himself heard in a, in, a, in, a, in a world forum? He's got to stop being so polite and so nice. He better go back to the guy who uh, broke things and attacked people with screwdrivers that he told us about. Remember he said a few debates ago, old Ben, that he once attacked someone with a screwdriver because he had a hot temper and he learned to control it? When he was a kid. Yeah, well, okay, if he got a little more, uh, you know, theatrical with that, maybe that would work for him. I like him, Ben. I'm not putting him down. I like Carson from the get-go. Again, he's not electable. He'd be a great guy to run some major division of the government. I don't know which yet. I'm still trying to think it, think about which one because I don't want him running for HHS because I want that job. You know, people think I'm serious about that. They think that Trump and I worked out a deal. Hey, Mike, you know, if you push me, I'll... I mentioned it on the show twice because I wanted to see his reaction. And he said that makes sense. That was his reaction. Just as he said, when I brought up the issue Monday, I said, Mr. Trump, how about a combat veteran to run the Defense Department instead of a policy wonk? He said, that makes sense to me. And I recommended Tom Cotton, okay? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. He got very badly hurt, and he's going down. Ted Cruz is going down. Plus, he has the Canada problem. I mean, he's got a huge problem, that problem with Canada, as to whether or not he can even run. I, I think he cannot run. So we'll see what happens. But uh, what I'd like to tell you is by design, maybe it was by instinct, okay? But it was not a good night for him, and it wasn't good for a couple of the other folks. It was not good at all. And in the meantime, I had, I had my forum, and I had tremendous numbers of veterans, and we raised $6 million, and it was a good night for us. He did good. And his event was good. And then you got to see the other candidates, which was good. Didn't hurt him. I don't know that it helped Donald Trump, but it helped the veterans, and it certainly exposed uh, the river dancer for what she is. She's a performer and a very good one, and her job is to kick uh, Republicans in the ribs because they won't fight back and attack her. I would see if it was me, if she attacked me, I'd attack her. Believe me, I would have done opposition research on her background, who she is, where she comes from, and then I would have attacked her. I wouldn't have just said, oh, don't kick me anymore. But this is what you get when you get old white men on the stage. Or if they're not old, they act like they're old. Why are they taking it from her? She's just a, a, news, a news dancer. He said, I'm not taking it from her. And he got off the stage. She's like a contestant in one of his events. He looks down upon her as a contestant in one of his beauty contests who's trying to take over the beauty contest. And so that's what that was about. This is what we're, we're reverting to in America today. We're down to this. ISIS is raping and pillaging. I got a story for you. I was holding it because I couldn't read it myself. Uh, and I uh, came out only today from Europe. ISIS sex slaves forced to undergo horrifying two-finger test. I'm not going to read it to you. I think the uh, title says it all. These girls were kidnapped and subjected to months of brutal sexual assaults. And as if being the sex slave of an Islamic State terrorist isn't horrific enough, Countless women and girls were then subjected to further humiliation, barbaric and appalling virginity tests. Those who escaped and survived to reveal the horrors that they endured at the hands of Islamic State militants, militants were forced to undergo the tests conducted by Kurdistan officials. So in other words, the whole bunch of them are no good. They're all brutal throwbacks. I don't care what their, their ethnicity is or nationality is, rather. They are all throwbacks. They all live in the 15th century. The girls underwent the abusive and inaccurate procedure as part of a forensic post-rape examination, said uh, Women's Right Division, blah, 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 a recent dispatches report. It, it's sickening. It's just heartbreaking to think that this is going on in our day and age. And of all people, I have the most 
I, I can't use the right word. I, I better use the exact right word for fear of losing my radio show to this very powerful lobby. <clears throat> the group, the groups that I am most disappointed in for saying zero, near zero are the Jewish groups. All of the loud, outspoken Jewish groups say nothing about the rape of the Yazidi girls. It makes me sick. They should be on the front lines of this human rights violation. But they're not. They're not saying a word about it. And they should. Isn't the motto of the Jewish groups never again? Can they stop thinking only about Jewish people? Can these groups stop thinking only about the Jewish experience? Can they start doing something for someone else? Can they help the Yazidi girls by exposing what the ISIS maniacs are doing to these girls is what I'm saying. I don't have to name them by name. You know who they are. I've named them before. To me, Religion Incorporated is what it's all about. I don't care what the religion is. Catholic Charities is guilty of their uh, shenanigans. Baptist Family Services, their shenanigans. And, of course, the Jewish groups are no different. And they should say something. Three to 5,000 young girls and women are enslaved by ISIS. Most of them come from the Yazidi minority, who are persecuted as devil worshippers. Now, what should be done is that Obama should have saved these girls by now. Hillary, of all people, should be saying something about this. Let's put aside everything else. Shouldn't Hillary is the champion of those who wear a skirt? Well, I'm sorry, that doesn't mean women anymore. It could be Scotsmen. Shouldn't Hillary is the champion of those who... No, that doesn't mean anything anymore. Shouldn't those who identify as women who look to Hillary Clinton as their savior because she identifies as a woman, shouldn't she, as the leader of those who identify as women, be saying the most about the, the rape of these girls and women? Has she said it recently? No. Because, what, what is she? Whatever. Okay, if you care to comment, 855-407-282. You should see the things on my Facebook page. What is wrong with people that they have nothing to do with write terrible things about me or Teddy? Can't you do anything else with your life? You know, you're going to be taken down anyway. If you, if you put hate up, that doesn't advance the conversation. I'm going to remove it or my staff removes it. That's all. Dear Savage, thanks for going on today, despite Teddy's uh, problems. Uh, any of the Trump's wall, Moloch. Trump wins. I hope he changes the name of the Golden Gate Bridge to the Savage Bridge when he wins. <laughs> and the mosquito thing, and the, the other, no one wants to talk about that. Dear Dr. Savage, Teddy will be fine without his teeth. Many dogs have their teeth taken out and managed just fine, even without, even with kibble. Whatever you normally feed him, you know, give him chunks, cut bone out. All right, I don't want to talk about the dog. Let's go to the callers. KSO, Rick, topic please. You're on the Savage Nation. Michael, you and Teddy are the tops, but I wanted to say that I'm all in for the Trump cotton ticket because we need two good warrior chiefs. But my moment of truth with the river dancer was her highly derisive interview with Tom Cotton, which I don't know if you've seen, which took place. No, no, wait, wait. When did she interview the, the war hero, Tom Cotton? When did she do that, the river dancer? It was during the Iran nuclear surrender debacle. And if you think she was disrespectful to Trump, you ought to, you ought to hear that. You'd be cursing at the TV as you I You mean she supported the Iran sell out no she she supported the idea that the president and the people behind him had the right to do what they were doing that cotton had no right to interfere with it even though he was doing it in a very respectful way in other words a senator has no right to even comment but just a, a measly river dancer does well she said what do you hope to accomplish here do you really think this is going to make a difference it was like a cnn style interview it was not it was so not what do, yeah, what do we learn then about this high kicking river dancer with uh with her attitudes towards all all uh, white men what what is she doing here i don't know but I, you saw it before i did that was the thing that convinced me you had said it before and uh i i, I realized that you were absolutely right after i saw that interview uh, have people look at that. It's, it's, it will make you sick to see your interview. I don't think most people don't know who Tom Cotton is. When, when Donald was on the show Monday, I said, would you, would you agree on this show to choose a combat veteran to run the Defense Department? And I would, I would nominate Tom Cotton. He said, that sounds like a good idea. I'm the only one to have brought that up. But what is Fox News doing by attacking a man as fine as Tom Cotton, attacking all the Republican candidates as though they are the enemy, and saying nothing but nice things to all the Democrats whenever they appear on that show. What does that tell you about Fox News? 
I think it tells you that secretly, or not even so secretly anymore, that 